got so close to this woman and I felt so attached because I had the same feelings I had with the Melissa, the person that I thought was, you know, my soulmate, whatever, just in alignment with that, that year. And it was so intense with everything going on in my life that I found myself one night just assuming, I heard you earlier, like I'm, I'm really grasping this, uh, just assuming betrayal or assuming trust. And I just, without any hesitation, sent her this text and said, I'm done, I'm done. And I guess my question is, and I think I already know the answer. Next. Uh, <laughs> which is, you know, I, I, my, my desire is not to re react. And what I'm getting is that, or what I, what, I, what I believe I'm getting is that in the vortex, vortex you don't have to judge what is happening now you are where you are now and regardless if my part of me is attached to this person it is what it is and i'm growing from this situation because my vortex is what i've created up until now and my job in all of it is just to enjoy and be and learn and uh, not contaminate it with <laughs> help me <laughs> well it it's easier said than done isn't it because and the thing is when you're when you are in the vo inside Damn it. <laughs> It is, and I'm like, and I don't like to hurt people. It's like, what happened? When you are inside the vortex, everything is so much clearer. And when you're outside the vortex, everything looks all convoluted and confused. And so you, you said something as you began visiting with us here that we want to reflect back to you because it was the most significant thing that you said. You said, I felt so connected to this person. I felt so connected. And then, and, and we wanted to jump in and say, well, what was going on there was that each of you were catalysts or conducive to helping the other one find alignment with who you really are. In other words, what you were really connecting with was your own vortex. What you were connecting with was your own dream of a relationship. What you were connecting with was all that you'd put into the vortex. And so you were catalysts that helped one another connect at times. And for a while you were really good at that. But it was your connection to your own alignment. It was your own alignment that you were feeling in all of that, you see. And the thing that makes it difficult to stay consistently in the vortex, even though you want to, is that if you forget that that the reason that you feel the way you do about someone is because of your connection to your vortex, much, much, much more, so much more than it doesn't even count the, so much more. It's not about who they're being, it's about your relationship with your inner being. Now, that doesn't mean that someone doesn't uplift you to that or evoke that from you or influence that from you because people who are tuned in, tapped in, turned on make it easier for you to be tuned in, tapped in, turned on. We were talking about how when you're in the vortex and then it causes a manifestation, which causes you to be in the vortex, which causes a manifestation. When you get on a roll like that and, and new in relationships, you often can because you you don't know enough about each other. You don't have a lot of baggage about each other. The newness of your relationship is kind of distracting you from the bad stuff that's gone in the trust issues that you've had in other relationships. And so it's, it, it, even though it hasn't gone away, it's not so active, but after a while, when the newness is not something that is calling you so much, it's easy to slip back into those old patterns. So what we want to emphasize is that, and your words were perfect. I loved the, what I loved who I was when I was in that relationship. Think about what that means. I, I was more tuned into who I really am. And I loved that. Well, you just have to make a decision that you're not ever again going to hold anybody else responsible to who you're being, mm -hmm. that your alignment with, uh, with your vortex and with your inner being is not dependent upon the behavior of any other. And when you get that, then you're going to love who you are with whoever you are with, because it's 
we often say to people who want to talk about relationships, you just have to make your relationship with your vortex and your inner being your primary relationship. Right, right. Almost to the point where you would say to anyone that you're coming to in a new relationship, I, I love you very much, but you're not my primary uh, interest. And most would recoil and say, then you're not right for me. And then you would say, well, let me continue. I've discovered that the best I can be for you is some someone who stays in complete alignment with who I really am, which means I can't make I can't make you more important than that alignment. Is that what pushes it away? Say again. Is, is that what pushes it away sometimes when you, t you know, when you were talking about you know, what I realized earlier is that okay to some degree. You know, I, I pushed it away when I look at, you know, what, what I do with clients and what I do in the world and I'm, n I'm never attached to an outcome and and I'm magical. I'm just magical in all of that. Now, well, now uh, let's go back and retrace your steps through that when I'm not attached to an outcome. So what does that mean? What, let, um, talk, I'm not a ca attached okay, to an good outcome. Question, good I'm not question. When you say I'm I, not attached to an outcome, you mean I'm not worried about it not turning out right. Right. So right. if I'm not worried about it not turning out right, then I'm not introducing that resistance into the mix. Right. And since everything's already in my vortex and I'm not doing that thing I do that prevents it from happening, since I'm not preventing it, now it's going to happen. Because the only thing that prevents what you want from happening is resistance that you're introducing to it. Every time, no exception. Every time, no exception. So don't do that. So when the... So... When the, so the 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 attachment to the experience I'm having with now, this person. Use, use more words. What do you mean? The attachment um, to the experience. God, is it? Um, yeah, it's I, it's it's a trip because you, you start realizing, okay, what what is it that I that that, that I and I'm still in the relationship. It's just has kind of gotten you know distant and it shifted and I'm but, you know, but, making. But let's start again. It didn't shift. You shifted. I you did. shifted. And you didn't shift in your relationship with the relationship. You shifted in your relationship with your inner being. Right. And so and I started you... to feel bad. I started but, to judge but, myself. But wait, but wait. So, so you were willing to sacrifice your relationship with your inner being. I did. By focusing on unwanted things. And you're blaming the relationship for the way you're focusing. Exactly. So what you're saying is you didn't distract me enough to keep me lined up. Or, 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 or you, or you didn't, Damn. or you didn't be, you didn't behave in enough appropriate ways to keep me lined up. Right. And, and it's, it's just miserable that I have to do the work. Uh. <laughs> so I'm done. Right. I'm done. I'm done with you. You're not supporting me in the way I need to be supported because obviously I can't focus. I can only observe and regurgitate. Right. And, you know, I honestly, I can't believe I'm going to say it, but it, it felt like a great orgasm. It was like, I'm done. And, well, but I, and you I see had what? like this relief, like I couldn't concentrate on anything else. So all of these well, things that I, you know, that well, here's, the th here's the thing that's interesting. It always feels really good when you let go of resistance. But we think the thing that's a little misunderstood here is that you, you and a lot of other people think that in order to let go of the resistance that you have to let go of the entire relationship. Right. And what we right. want you to understand is that, that someone said the other day, I've given up on my dream and I feel better. And we said, no, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> because first of all, you cannot give up on your dream. No. Your dream is going to dog you till eternity ends yeah. and that will never be in other words your dream your dream is always going to call you you can't mm. give up on it mm. so you can't give up on the idea of this ideal relationship you mm. can't give up on that you've put you've contributed too much in it it's become too vivid and too real and so the relief that you felt was you convinced yourself in a logical way that this relationship wasn't the one and that pursuing it was keeping you from your dream rather than allowing it and so what happened is you dumped off some resistance that you thought would make it easier for you to get what you want but it turns out it's not making it easier is it and why do you think that is why do you think that you've had a harder time since then 
In other words, we're not trying to say to you that this is the person. We're no. just saying to you that this is the person who leads to the person who leads to the person who leads to the person that is the person. Or this is the person who leads to the person. Or this is the person. In other words, we're not saying that it's not the person or that it is the person. We're just saying you can't get there from there as long as you think that that person has to be different in order to change the way you feel. Because that person doesn't have to be different. And if that person does have to be different, then you're in deep doo-doo. Because, because you're giving someone else the power over the way you feel. It's like you right, need right. to be smarter or you need to be weller or you need to be more, more of a lover. You need to be something different than you are because I'm only an observer who is, who is reflecting back emotionally what I'm observing. And what bums you out about that is that it's not who you are because you are a creator. You see? Absolutely right. And you're not just a creator of a relationship. You're the creator of how you feel in the world, of how you feel. In, you're the creator of you in a relationship. You're the creator of you in your body. You're the creator of you. You're the creator of you in life. You're the creator of you who is the star in the center of every manifestation. That's what, and so you're the creator of you and all of the other people, people who play the various parts and every circumstance that you're, you are the creator of what comes out of everyone's mouth. Isn't that interesting? You create what comes out okay. of their mouth because you set the vibrational tone that evokes it. And it's such a slight adjustment for you to make. And that's why we're hitting it head on with you. Yeah. Because almost everybody in the world who is having a relationship is having a feeling response to the relationship. Yes. So for example, if you're with someone who is kind, you feel, you feel like you're in a good relationship. If you're with someone who's funny, you feel like you're in a good relationship. If you're with someone who really appreciates your positive aspects, you feel like you're in a good relationship. If you, if you are with someone who brings out the best of you, you feel like you're in a good relationship. But we just want to say in the midst of all of that, it's somebody else doing more of the work because they're holding you as their object of attention from inside the vortex. And that's why it feels so good to you. Now, of course, we would prefer that kind of a relationship to you than someone who's seeing you from outside the vortex, who's making you be feel defensive and justify everything, but it's still not doing the work. In other words, you're not really going to feel satisfied and in, until you feel all of those things about you without needing someone else to reflect it back to you. Got it. Because because they are, because they're fickle, they might get distracted. They might have something else they want to think about, which will then make you feel like a puppet who has been let go of the strings. And then you'll send Absolutely. them a text that says, I'm done. <laughs> Because I need you to hold me as your undivided object of attention because how I feel really matters to me, damn it. I do. And are you saying to us that you like self-sufficiency because, because there's less to manage? There are fewer moving parts. Yes. And, 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 what, but... <laughs> and what, we want, what we want to point out is that if you will decide to do the only thing that matters and the only thing that really works which is tend to your relationship with the vortex yeah. that then the vortex will affect yeah. all of the manifestations and bring round to you the details of everything that you want mm. so i'm not looking at the things i don't want i'm looking at the things i want but i'm dependent upon finding things that i want to affect the way i feel can you hear that mm -hmm. Ooh, mm. you're still a slave you're still a slave mm -hmm. to what somebody oh, else does, yeah, you see. Yeah, that's yeah. what you're done with. You're right. You're, I'm done. That's what you're mm -hmm. done with. You're done depending upon things you can't depend on. And you have decided to start depend upon what you can depend upon. And I know what that is. Which is your relationship with your vortex. Mm -hmm. You can depend upon feeling good because you know how to focus. And you can depend on feeling good because you want to feel good. And you can depend on your inner being in your vortex because it will never go away. It will never forsake you. It will never betray you. It will always be there beaming a signal that is undeniable and always findable if you will get anywhere in the vicinity of it. In other words, you always have the ability to feel good no matter what. But you have to, first of all, want to feel good enough to feel for it. And second of all, you have to finally decide it's nobody else's job to behave in any kind of way that will then give me the feedback that I need in order to feel good. And then you're free. Then you're finally free.